Uh, sorry for everybody's indulgence for that. Um, item number five, 17.5, acquisition of 11 Wellesley Street West from Infrastructure Ontario for park purposes. We have a, <coughs> excuse me, we have a speakers list. Um, so just so everybody's aware of the format of um, how this part of the meeting takes place, I'll call, call out the speakers one by one. You have five minutes to address the, the committee. Um, we can each individually ask you questions for up to five minutes. When all the speakers are done, we bring this uh, portion of the meeting, what's called into committee, where we ask questions of staff on this item, and then uh, councillors from outside the committee can speak, and then uh, internal or councillors on the committee speak, and then we move forward with a vote. So, the first speaker I have listed is Ian Flett. Barrister and Solicitor on behalf of the Clover Hill Community Association and the Church Wellesley Neighborhood Association. Morning, sir. You have uh, five minutes. There's a microphone in front of you, the yellow button. When that's lit up, you press that. When that uh, yellow light is on, it means your speaker's on. My view phone's on. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council members and committee members. Um, I'm the uh, solicitor, as you mentioned, for the Bay Clover Hill Community Association, the Church Wellesley Neighborhood Association. These are both incorporated residence associations that represent thousands of residents in the downtown area and also condominium corporations all through uh, the Bay Wellesley area. Uh, you may or may not be familiar with this piece of land. It's a large empty lot that has been surrounded by hoarding for some 20 years. Uh, that is in the report that you have before you. Uh, and I, I'd like to take on the task of explaining the very exciting <laughs> procedural items and, and considerations that, this, um, that this, these community groups have been through in, in trying to convert this land into a public park. Uh, the community has on many occasions told its politicians, uh, both the member of provincial parliament and the city councillor, Councillor Wong Tam, that they were interested in this land being used for a public park. In fact, this land has a long history of having been intended for some form of public use. And that communication goes back several years. It was only after litigation was resolved Mr. between... Mr. Flett, sorry, could I have the level of conversation toned down a bit? If you want to take some discussions outside, I think the deputants would appreciate that. Sorry about that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it was only after litigation between developers and the province was resolved that the land became surplus land for the province of Ontario and that it began the process to try to dispose of this land in a sale. The reason that the community approached me to help them in this case was that they only found out about the sale in the very last moments that they had to try to consult with either the city or Infrastructure Ontario about the sale. In order for Infrastructure Ontario to conduct its sale, it had to complete a class environmental assessment. Uh, it's, a, it's a special class, uh, not unlike the class environmental assessment that is uh, used for municipal actions, but it's one that applies specifically to, to, uh, to Ontario. Uh, and it was, in fact, only five days before the very end of the comment period on that class environmental assessment that the community was made aware of Infrastructure Ontario's plans to sell the land. The question, of course, is how is it that Infrastructure Ontario was able to proceed with the class environmental assessment, the very heart of which is meant to be a consultative process uh, without ever consulting with the city? I would draw your attention to the package that you have with respect to this uh, item to a letter that was sent to the City Councilor Kristen Wong Tam on September 11th from, uh, from the Minister Bob Shirelli, Minister for Infrastructure Ontario, where he states, this is being sold in an open and fair process uh, and you were consulted at, at one point or another. And he mentions two instances of consultation. The first is on June 19th. Now, uh, Councillor Wong Tam has been very helpful and very involved in this process with the community, and her staff provided me with a full timeline of the consultations. Councillor Wong Tam described to me and was prepared to swear this, although it wasn't necessary in this procedure, uh, that she did in fact meet with Infrastructure Ontario on June 19th, uh, but that that meeting was one where there was absolutely no give and take or any indication that there would be an opportunity for Councillor Wong Tam to ask the province to slow down its, proce its process. The letter also alleges that staff, city staff, was consulted uh, six months previous to the environmental assessment. This is accurate. 
However, the consultation that was delivered to city staff was on a point-by-point -point basis simply asking what is the zoning, what is the official plan, what, and whether uh, and does this area have an environmental it does this have an environmental sensitive area on it these were the binary questions there was no instructions or opportunity for staff to say to infrastructure ontario there has been a long standing interest in this land for a public park and so it's somewhat disingenuous unfortunately for infrastructure ontario to say look you had the chance and the tragedy in this really is that the city manager had to approach Infrastructure Ontario with the same uh, as any other private bidder would approach the land. And to, uh, to further the tragedy, inf uh, in Ontario does have a procedure, and in fact, Infrastructure Ontario is required to list land that is, that is available to other, government, uh, other levels of government, including government agencies. Somehow, and this is where I bring my attention to the committee today, this aspect was missed. There was not an opportunity for Toronto to, in good faith, say to Ontario, hey, we have had a long-standing interest in this land. Give us a chance to enter into discussions on how to acquire it. That concludes my five minutes, and I think I've gotten my point across. The impact of this will be reflected by the other deputants. I'm available for your questions. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Flett. Are there any questions of the deputant? Seeing none. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair.